بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه وبارك وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا رسول الله صلاة وسلاما عليك يا حبيب الله صلاة وسلاما عليك يا رحمة للعالمين وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا شفيع المذنبين أما بعد we please glorify and express our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, peace, blessings and salutations upon our master, our leader, Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his purified household, the Ahlul Bayt, upon his rightly guided companions, his Sahaba, his Kiram, and all those that follow in their path, alayhi wa jma'in. Alhamdulillah, we once again express our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for affording us the opportunity of being present in the best of places at the best of times and this is a moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where there is immense amount of virtue and blessings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings and to accept all that we do solely for His pleasure insha'Allah. Alhamdulillah, before we continue, I request the brothers once again, those that are scattered around the masjid to please come forward and fill this sufu from the front um, as it makes it easier for the masjid to get filled thereafter inshallah as well as the virtue that's contained in sitting towards the front of the masjid in the first few uh, sufu that we have here inshallah so for our own benefit let us maximize on this day of your Jumu'ah inshallah as we all are aware we are currently in a specific time period of the year and that is we have just entered into the final month of the Gregorian calendar and that is the month of December and we know all that happens in the month of December um, everyone somehow or the other experiences the very same thing in terms of a year end and we know that this also ushers in the time period where it is a period of festivity a period of celebration a period of joy and we see throughout our country we already see the celebration starting to take place. If you go to stores, you already see it being decorated for the month and celebration of Christmas. And likewise, we have many people that have already planned their year end or their holiday, their vacation, those that worked hard. This is the time period now to relax and to sit back and just enjoy, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward all those that worked hard to support their families and to enjoy the luxuries Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us. But it is also a time period for us to reflect upon, more so, because what is currently happening in the global dynamics, and this is something that we need to be aware of, is that not only is it a period of festivity, a period of holiday, a period that we all know what goes with December, but we also know globally there's many things happening as well. Amongst those, Everyone knows that currently the World Cup is taking place and this is a global event that has drawn many people from many parts of the world to one place at one point in time, one time. And we all know what goes with it. There's been many people throughout the globe that have travelled far and wide in support of their country that have made their way to Qatar. And currently it's a big celebration taking place. I haven't been following anything. So I don't really know what the dynamics and the statistics are. But nevertheless, I'm sure many are following it. And just to put a disclaimer, inshallah, this is not to make anyone despondent in not watching soccer. This is not to make anyone despondent about the sport of soccer. But it's just for us to gain a reminder of what is happening out there in the broader world. And wallahi, if we are to look into it, all the predictions of Rasulullah are slowly unfolding and it is being shown to us clearly. And if we are not going to wake up 
and if we are not going to take well, the heed of the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then we will be amongst those transgressors and the wadiyin that Allah subhanahu wa taala speaks of in the Quran. So this is, inshallah, going to be a reminder for us as to what is currently happening in the world and how to align our lives, being Muslims. We've already been given the message of Islam. We've been given the best of prophets, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We've been given the best of books, the Quran al Karim. There's no need for us to turn to anyone, anything else, for anything. And this is the time period for us to reflect upon. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, with this in mind, I want you all to listen to this Quranic ayah that is in Surah Al Hadid. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, and I want you to keep what I've just said in mind, relating to this ayah that I'm going to read to you, and tell me if it is not true as to what is currently happening in the world. Allah subhanahu wa taala says in Surah Al Hadid, "Ya'lamu anna al hayat al dunya." لعب وله وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الدنيا What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us in this Quran? What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us and see how true it is? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya alamu, know, all of you should know, that this worldly life is no more than a play. Ya alamu, annama al-hayatu dunya la'ib. La'ib means to play, a game, amusement. What Allah is saying? Know that this worldly life is no more than a play, amusement, luxury, Mutual boasting and competition in wealth and children. Is that not prevalent to what is currently happening? The previous World Cup in Russia costed them approximately 20 billion US dollars for the previous World Cup. In order to better what Russia did, Qatar times it by 10 and spent 200 billion dollars of the World Cup this time, times 10 of what Russia has spent, over 200 billion. And wallahi, this is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the Quran of a competition of wealth. For what? For amusement and play, for la'ibu wa la'ibu, to satisfy desires. And we are all proud that it's in a Muslim country. And we are all proud that they saw Quranic ayahs. And they are all proud that on the opening ceremony there was a Quranic ayah recited. But what about the ahadith and the ayahs that tell us that do not spend lavishly? What about those Quranic ayahs that say don't get soaked in dunya? This is a new brand and version of Islam that's being proposed out there. This is clear signs of Akhir zaman of the end of times and the predictions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Come, the youngsters, please move away from the wall, don't worry. The masjid is quite strong enough to stand on its own, inshallah. This is more for the youngsters, actually. And I want all the youngsters to pay attention. Why? It's because this is what we are being duped into. Is this version of Islam that's being shown to us out there. And wallahi, if we are to really analyze this World Cup, we will come to realize that soccer is only a small portion of it. It is far bigger and greater than what the soccer is. It's far bigger than what you think it is. It's not just 22 men running after one ball. No. It is far greater than that. And wallahi, if we are to look at the political dynamics behind this, which I'm not going to get into, but there's an entire political dynamic behind it. Wallahi, you would see how scary the reality of the world is just by this one event called the World Cup. So what today we're going to discuss is this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says know that this worldly life is no more than play, amusement, luxury, mutual boasting and competition in wealth and children. Competing in wealth. We want to show how much we possess. We want to show how much we can spend. If Russia spent 20, 20 billion US dollars, we'll spend over 200 billion dollars. And yet most of the world is suffering in poverty. That's the irony of the situation. 
What else? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likens it to us. This is like the rain that causes plants to grow. You see the plants growing, lush. And thereafter, it is brings delight to those planters. Those that planted it get happy. And thereafter, the plants dry up. And then you see them wither and become like shrubs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this says, وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ The year after will be either severe punishment or it will be forgiveness and pleasure. وَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانٌ Right? And then listen to the last line. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this world is no more than delusion of enjoyment. What is this world? No more than a delusion of enjoyment. We think we are having fun. It's fun, it's enjoyment, it's amusement. But wallahi, it's a delusion, complete delusion. It's a lie of what's out there. And this is what's mentioned in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. As for the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, حُبُّ الدُّنْيَا رَأْسُ كُلِّ خَطِيئًا Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the love of this world is the origin of all sin. This is where sin starts off. Is when there's an attachment and love toward towards the dunya. Wallahi, let us take heed just of this hadith in the Quranic ayah that I've recited before you. This is currently the state of affairs globally for the Islamic, for the Muslim Ummah and for the broader world out there. For Muslims, we should take even more heed because we've been given the message by Rasulullah We cannot remain ignorant and say that we do not know any better. We must make an effort and this is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling us here in written terms. But inshallah, that's the political dynamic out there. That is the evils that are happening throughout the world. That is what is currently happening where we get so duped and engrossed in this event called World Cup. We enjoy it so much, we want to support our team, not realizing what a delusion it is to our Iman. But inshallah, the topic for today, as I mentioned, I don't want to make those despondent that are soccer fanatics and enjoy watching the sport. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you and grant you the ability to achieve better goals in life, inshallah. But Allah, but there's a beautiful article that was written. And I want us to understand where we can draw parallels from this game of football to our life that we lead. How we can draw parallels. I'm not speaking about the actual sport, not the World Cup itself. How we can draw parallels to our life. And this article was written by a brilliant scholar. I do not know exactly who he is, but it was it was so refined that I said I must share it with all of you. And he very very beautifully titles his article as the Soccer World Cup from another corner. The Soccer World Cup from another corner. And inshallah, I will go through this article with you today and let us take the lessons that the scholar of Islam has put forward and makes us understand the realities. So he says, obviously currently we know people from around the globe have traveled to Qatar and in support of their team and we know the craziness that goes with it, etc. Right? Many people are glued to the TV, they're watching their games, they are supporting their team, some even wear the kit and sit at home. Even though they're not really there, that just shows the love and the mahabba. That they'll wear the kit, what they are wearing, the players. That player doesn't know their name, that player doesn't know who they are, where they stay, but they're still wearing the kit. And supporting them from home, some of them even scream at home for that player. And he's sitting how many thousand miles away. If only the love can be for Rasulullah like that. Imagine if we emulate him like that and chant and scream his praises from here. The difference is he hears you and he'll draw closer to you. Unlike those players that are standing in Qatar. So the first point that he mentions very beautifully is... It is amazing how players engage in a football match and have their lives guided and governed by the rules of the game. Their lives are guided and governed by the rules of the game. They are constantly cognizant of the fact that if the rules are broken or the laws are not abided by, then penalties will follow. If you break the rules, it's a penalty. Right? The player is guided by the lines and the boundaries and parameters of the game which he plays. As Muslims, we have been sent for a much greater purpose. And he says the lines and boundaries that govern us are the lines and boundaries that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. And he goes to the Quranic ayah, وَتِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَعْتَدُوهَا وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ 
what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there are boundaries or limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us so do not transgress them meaning do not go against what the laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put forth and whoever transgresses the limits of Allah it is those who are amongst the ghalimun the transgressors, the wrongdoers so what is he saying first is the abiding by the laws of Sharia in the game of soccer those 22 players are contained in that boundary, the border of the game. They cannot take the ball and go play outside the stadium. It's not part of the game. They have to be in that box, that rectangular box. If the ball goes out of the box, then it becomes a throw-in or a corner. But it has to be played in the box. And this is what he mentions, he draws a parallel to our life. That we are given the, those very same boundaries, the laws of the Sharia, how many of us stick within that Sharia and do not violate those laws and go out of our box of Sharia? Some of us think that is oppressive. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us so many rules? Can we imagine a life without Sharia? How unethical, how immoral a life would be? And that's when you look at the Nasara, those that are disbelievers, the Kuffar. Look at their lives. No rules, no regulations. Do what you want. Enjoy the dunya. There's no rules. There's no accountability before Allah. So what they do? A dunya sijrul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. For them, this dunya becomes the paradise. They can do everything. Some of our youngsters now in the holiday period will despise the non-believers. Why? Because they can do what they want. No salah. They can go and party the entire day in Camp Spain. They can have parties upon parties. Drink, alcohol, zina, you name it. But we are so governed by Sharia. But this is uh, in reality the blessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us. Why? Because we are not meant to just enjoy the dunya. We have a greater purpose. And that is journey towards the akhirah. He mentioned the next point. And the next point is our two linesmen. If you are to watch a football match, he says how strange is it that a person is so mindful about the two linesmen watching his action from either side. And he's so cautious about being caught offside that while he is mindful, unmindful of Kiram and Kathleen on either side of his shoulder, writing all his actions. If you watch the football game, you will see those two linesmen running from one side to the other. That's their job. Their job is only to see which of these players are going offside. Who is going beyond these limits, where he's not supposed to be. And the moment he does that, you hear the whistle, caught offside. He has to get back. The whole game is stopped just for that whistle of the referee. Do we all know what's, what's happening here? This is the game of football, those two men running on the sides. And we have Kiram and Kartimi watching us all the time. Those two referees sometimes may not pick up every move. You need a replay in slow motion to see whether he really was offside. But Kiram and Kartimi, your every single move that you make is recorded. How cautious are we of these two angels that are placed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to observe our every action? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a full security control system in us. CCTV is built in. That our every action is recorded. Sometimes we do actions unmindful. Sometimes we do actions where we are not even conscious of the wrong that we are doing. But it's being recorded. And that's what's going to happen in Qiyamah. Is you're going to be brought forward. The whole screen will be played out for you. Your entire life. Right? And then he mentioned that's regarding our two linesmen. Then he says, the other point to reflect upon from this World Cup and from soccer is standing together to defend. He says, how strange is it that when a free kick of the opposing team is so dangerously placed, that it is a threat to the goal. Players then, what they do when there's a free kick? They rally together and what they do, they stand in front, in one saf, right? And they form a line of defense. And in our case, we think of standing, we do not think of standing together to resist the onslaught of Islam from these or from those opposing the team. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, 
إن الله يحب الذين يقاتلون في سبيله صفا كأنه بنيان مرصوص. الله سبحانه وتعالى says Allah loves those who fight in His cause in a row, in a صف, as though they are a single structured joint family. Don't don't we take this example from soccer, where there's a free kick, especially if it's close by to the goalpost. What happens? Don't you see how many defenders come and stand there? Even the striker will come into the back just to block that goal from taking place. But what do they do? They stand in one soft, uniform, <coughs> blocking. And we as an Ummah cannot do that. We see our brothers and sisters suffering throughout the world. We see our brothers and sisters going through so many trials and difficulties. But we cannot stand in that one soft together to defend the Ummah. These same Arab states that are spending over 200 billion of dollars cannot save their brother from poverty, cannot save their brothers from the Yahud. <coughs> these same Munafiks, these same people that are sellouts for the team, this is what's happening. And we are all getting happy when we see Quran in Ayat al Fatr. Subhanallah. So these are standing together to defend. The other point, something that we mention very often, is how strange is it that we will do whatever it takes to be like our sporting heroes in terms of dress, code, hairstyle, external appearances to show our identity and loyalty. But there is nothing in us to show that we are followers of Rasulullah Wallahi, this point should hit home very hard. Look at our youngsters today. As I always mentioned, the only player I know is Ronaldo, right? His hairstyle has become the most common hairstyle you can find. If he wears a certain boot, you'll go buy that boot. If he puts a fader or spice, you can put that hairstyle. If I to ask all the football fanatics, describe your players to me. Wallahi, they can describe in detail. I just saw the other day when these uh, Saudis won the match against Argentina. Someone posted a video. This guy in his Arab garb, he wearing a kurta, with that scarf, full Arab garb. He goes and he celebrates, but he does Ronaldo's move of celebrating. He never scored the goal, he's celebrating the win against Argentina, but he's celebrating like Ronaldo. Meaning he's watching Ronaldo so closely that he can celebrate like him the way he does his moves. With his shima and everything. Subhanallah. Then we see, as I mentioned, the soccer match is taking place in Qatar. Our brothers are wearing the kids here in their homes. And they make it as though they are sitting live in the stadium or that the players know them personally. They scream, they shout, they celebrate, they, they chant, they, they encourage the players, yet that person cannot hear them at all. Emulation, who are we emulating? We love the soccer players so much, we love these icons and superstars so much. Tell our kids, describe Rasulullah in detail to me. Describe me. How was his hair? What did he look like? Describe his eyes to me. Describe his beard. Describe what he used to wear. It's all documented. Shama'il of Tirmidhi is an entire compilation of the complete description of Rasulullah to the point that they even describe the colors of clothing, clothing that he used to wear. They describe the different lengths of his hair. They describe how many white hairs he had in his beard, in his head. This was the Sahaba's emulation. And you know what that did for them? That's going to give them salvation in the Akhirah. What does this emulation do for you? In your qabr, who's going to come there? The soccer stars? The ones that you chanted and rallied and supported so much. You loved them so much. Who are the kids? Are they going to come to you? Someone showed me a video the other day. The soccer stars after the game, they threw their t-shirt to one of the youngsters in the crowd. That guy started crying. He got so happy to get a sweaty, smelly shirt of a soccer star. Subhanallah. We love them so much that we're willing to take their dirty laundry and preserve it like a relic. Wallahi, this should be a wake-up call for the Ummah. When are we going to rectify our ways and start emulating the best of creation, who was the best inward and outward? This is a message for our youngsters. How many of us can describe accurately the physical features of him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best of role models. The one that's going to come in your cover. The one that you would want to be with in the akhirah. 
Let us start from now. Forget these people who are just chasing after one ball, who are getting the name and fame. You celebrating, but you get nothing out of it. Subhanallah. The irony of the whole point. Nevertheless, going on. The next point that this writer mentions, very, very thought-provoking. He says, how strange is it that a person fears the yellow warning card of the referee, but fails to respond to the mild reprimands that have come from Allah Ta'ala. How many times Allah gives us a chance? How many times we are going through certain trials and tribulations, Allah gives us warning signs? And what are those warning signs that Allah gives? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us trials and tribulations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give sicknesses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause deaths in the family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant financial losses. So many people going through different trials. We see death happening so often. Two years of COVID. How many deaths did we see? Are these not amongst the signs of Allah? Allah is giving us warning signs that you are going to be in that line as well. You are going to be returning to Allah. Allah gives you a sickness. Why? Because Allah hates you. Allah wants to oppress you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does that because He loves you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you that trial and tribulation because He doesn't want you to be misguided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to draw you close. Always think of a trial and tribulation as a means of attaining closest to Allah. Why? Because if you are in a well of state and if there's no problems in your life, do you think you'll make that concerted effort in remembering Allah? So this, these are the yellow cards that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us. And then he says, how strange is it that we are wary about the red card of the referee, which would signify suspension or expulsion for a short period of the field play. When we get the red card, you miss the next game. Am I right? Am I right? When you get the red card, you miss the next game, you suspend it, but you still can come back to play. But when you get the red card from Allah, what does that mean? It means that those actions will shift us from Jannah forever. How cautious are we from the red card of Allah? That if we are to get the red card from Allah, we are compromising for our Jannah. We are compromising for eternal happiness. We are compromising for paradise. But yet we are so quick to do things that will be heedless of Allah. We are so quick. How many of us miss salah because of the soccer match? How many of us sit that entire 90 minutes and more watching that soccer match but cannot sit five minutes in the remembrance of Allah? Find it difficult to come to the masjid. Find it difficult to read salah. Find it difficult to pick up the Quran. Find it difficult to read salawat ala nabi. But yet we want to get Jannah. Yet we want salvation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a very beautiful point that he mentioned. Then going on, he says, How strange is it that the player is concerned about millions of people around the world watching his actions. But he seems to be unperturbed about the day when every deed of his will be played out in front of mankind on the day of Qiyam. Soccer stars are sitting with stadiums full. What does that do to them? It spurs them on. It's part of the atmosphere of the game. It makes them encouraged to play better. But what about that day of Qiyamah when we will be brought forward and every deed of ours will be unfolded in front of the entire creation? Did we ever think about that? This is what's going to happen. We always speak about Qiyamah. We always speak about the day of Hisab, the day of accountability. Do we realize how intense that day is going to be? Wallahi, if we reflect upon just how intense that day is going to be, you will change your entire life just preparing for that akhirah. So like the soccer stars are enjoying the spectators, watching their every move of the game, let us be mindful that the spectators for us will be the entire mankind on that day of Qiyamah. Then he mentions, the matches of the World Cup may go into injury time. <coughs> However, as far as our life is concerned, our time span in this world will not end a second earlier, nor delay a second later. In soccer, after 90 minutes, you may get a few minutes extra bonus, injury time, an extended time period. Why? It was the time that you missed out, some time wastage that happened during the game. So therefore, you are afforded the few minutes extra. And the moment you score the goal, then that's the winner. But imagine our lifespan. Do you think you're going to get that extra time? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةِ الْأَجَلِ فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for every nation, there is a specified time. So when their time has come, they will not remain behind an hour, nor will they proceed it. SubhanAllah. Have we ever thought about that? That when that time that you will be met with Malak al maut then what's going to happen? And it's a hadith of Rasulullah, where he says that at that time you will wish, let me go and give more sadaqah, let me go and give more salah, let me go and put my life right, let me go and ask for forgiveness. Let me go and mend ties with those that I've broken it with. But there's no time for that. There's no time. Immediately the operation starts. And that is your ruh being removed from your body and that is the way you leave the dunya. Let us all be amongst those that think wisely and think of the akhirah more than our lives in the dunya, inshaAllah. And then he says, how strange is it that a person understands that after the final whistle is blown, no matter how many goals are scored, they don't count in his favor. But the same person fails to understand that when the final whistle of his life is blown, no more good deeds could be added to his account for the other. As I mentioned, you'll wish you could have done more. you wish you could have done more good deeds, but it will be irrelevant. You cannot do anything after that. And then he finally says, sometimes a person is at the mouth of the goal, but fails to put the ball at the back of the net. Have we seen that before? Sometimes the best of players, they'll miss a complete sitter. We call it sitter. The goal post is open. He'll still miss the goal. And what does he say? How often Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented us with golden opportunities to gain nearness to him. But we miss those opportunities. Allah gives us so many opportunities. Allah knows how weak we are. Allah knows how negligent we are. Allah still gives us all the opportunities can find. And what are those opportunities? Allah gives us an opportunity to turn to him in repentance. How often Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, is there anyone that needs forgiveness? Call out to me. <coughs> is there anyone that needs salvation? Call. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us certain time periods of the year. <coughs> Bonus time periods. Laylatul Qadr. You pray on that night, you get over 80 years of worship reward. How, how beneficent is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then he says, looking after aged parents, the amount of reward that's engaged in that, assisting the needy, performing salah, giving charity, reconciling friendships and family ties. These are all the opportunities Allah gives us regularly to take those opportunities. If we cannot be amongst those that are amongst the abideen, those that worship Allah continuously, Allah gives us an opportunity to give sadaqah. Be good towards a person. Allah tells us, just smile at your brother, it's a form of charity. Allah tells us, perform salah in jama'ah. It equals 27 times more than reading it on your own. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, these are all the bargains last week I spoke in table view. And I mentioned regarding the Black Friday specials. I said, these are our White Friday specials Allah gives us. These are the combo deals Allah gives us. He knows we cannot do what the Anbiya and Uliya did. Allah tells us, read Fajr and Isha and Jama'ah, the whole entire night we know, Father. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, fast the three white days of the month, it's like you fast the entire month. Combo deals. Read one salawat upon Rasulullah, you'll get elevated by 10. Your reward is times 10. Your sins are minus 10. Can we beat these combo deals? Last week we saw everything was about Black Friday. It carried on right to Cyber Monday. We have White Friday and Holy Monday. Let us make the most of these deals Allah gives us not only once a year. This is throughout the year. What that means for Akaf will be safeguarded in his Iman till the next Friday. Subhanallah. Beautiful deals Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us regularly for us to constantly be elevated and draw closer to him. How foolish are we if we do not maximize on these opportunities Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us. This is a beautiful article that was written by this respected scholar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. And let us be amongst those that have taken heed from this article and have benefited from it. And change our lives and do not be foolish by getting engrossed in the play that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us, tells us in the Quran, that this dunya is but amusement and play. Do not get distracted with it. Do not get carried away by it. It is not the ultimate goal. Also on the occasion of World Cup, I composed a few verses of poetry. 
on the occasion when I've been seeing all the adverts and everything that's happening, the excitement that was building up for the World Cup, and someone sent me a nasheed, I don't know whether it's a nasheed, whatever it is, it's a song composition by one of the famous Munshids, Mahir Zain, who did a, a splendid job in production on the theme song of the World Cup. Right, so whoever knows the theme song, I wrote a few lines of poetry saying Hayya Hayya. That's the theme song of the World Cup. Every World Cup has a theme song. So because it's in Qatar, it's in Arabic. So therefore it says Hayya Hayya, come, come. So I said Hayya Hayya, the World Cup has come. Full of craziness, the world has become. Look at the entire dunya, crazy. World Cup started, Qatar. People have journeyed to Qatar. Standing outside those gates for so long. As I say, people are wearing the kids here locally. This is the craziness of the dunya. 22 grown men running after one ball. Now the most revered sport called football. What a global industry this has become. Look at the multi-millions, billions, trillions that these soccer stars are earning for what? To keep the ball. 22 grown men. This is the reality. I also enjoy football in my schooling days. And it's a very wonderful sport for recreational purposes. But I'm talking about the reality of the matter for those that have become fanatic in the sport. And this is what the global order is. This is what the new world order is. It's consumerism, capitalism, to draw you in. And this is what it is. I mentioned the rules of the game governed by FIFA. By FIFA. Where did FIFA originate? In France. Right? It's a French concept. Right? So the rules of the game governed by FIFA, the rules of our life governed by Sharia. How appropriately followed and abiding by the rules are the soccer stars to the FIFA, the, the football, the what football federation, whatever it is. They abide by the rule. If you violate FIFA, you are fined or you may be thrown out of it. Then I said, by adorning various colors, you support a country. Whereas following the Sunnah, you get paradise entry. That's the reward. You want to follow your soccer star, your superstar, you want to wear the color of the country, you won't get anything out of it. If you follow the sunnah of Rasulullah, you guarantee to get paradise entry. And not just paradise entry, but you'll be with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Watching the opponents engaging in a tackle, while shaitan waits to put you in a shackle. How engrossed people get in football. That person is running, he tackles another place of another person, you falling from your couch. That's how engaged people get in watching the tackle, watching what's happening in football. The moment the goal is scored, they start jumping. The reality of the matter. And then Salah time comes and Salah time goes, I'll read after the game. By then you forget about the Salah. And the Salah time is gone. Compromising what? A 19 minute football match. And thereafter we say, Scoring a goal is the purpose of the game. Then being deceived by chasing after fame. That's what it is. The more goals you score, the most popular. Why is Ronaldo so popular? Because of the amount of goals he scored. His talent in the game. And then what? He became the most famous. So that's the name of the game, his fame. Chasing after fame. Hubbu dunya Rasu kulli khatiya. Love of the dunya is the root of all sins. Becoming the best team is the ultimate claim, whilst forgetting the creator is the true aim. When you get so engrossed in becoming the best team, in abiding by the rules of the game, in following those superstars and soccer stars, what happens in the rush? You're ultimately missing the goal and the aim of remembering your creator. And then I finally say, maybe following the way of our beloved Rasul to achieve better goals and a cup from his pool. That is ultimately what it is. Follow Rasulullah. That's a better goal for you. And to get a cup from his pool so that you can drink from that fountain of Gotham. This cup is one simple gold cup that will come to them and will go to the next winner for the next World Cup. It doesn't stay. But that cup of Gotham that you drink from Rasulullah, you will never suffer thirst again. That will water that is so sweet from the hand of Rasulullah. Let us get our priorities right. Let us not be fooled and duped into this new world order of consumerism, capitalism, drawing us, sucking us into dunya and becoming foolish people that are running after other people. Let us follow the true role models of life 
And that is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the tawfiq and the hidayah to make amal upon all that has been said and to emulate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the best of our abilities and specifically for our youngsters during this time of festivity, inshallah. There's just a few announcements, two announcements. I've been requested by my Ustad, Sheikh Munir Sadadi, to announce his um, academy. The Dr. Ahmad Isa Al Mahsabi Center of South Africa is now open for admission 2023. The program that I offer is Hifth, Tajweed, Quran, Literacy, Tafsir, Ijazah, and Sanat for Qiraat. And the posters are going to be put up, so there's even a scan code that you can, it is a code that you can scan for registration. The base of this institution is in Scarborough, in Scarborough Masjid al Mahir, and the other campus is in Weinberg, number, two, four, number 46, Douglas Road, Weinberg. This is the institution of Sheikh Munir Satali that is running under the banner of Dr. Ahmad Isa Masrawi, one of the global Qurra and the leading scholars of Quran currently in the world. We also are open for admission 2023 at the Masjid for the Imam Abdul Samad Quran Academy. Alhamdulillah, we had our last day yesterday and now we are open for our programs next year. That is the pre-hifth madrasa, the part-time and full-time hifth, as well as inshallah adult Quran classes for anyone that's uh, interested. You can contact me directly for them. The programs will resume from January onwards and inshallah we are having an open day or rather a breakdown of the programs that will be discussed tomorrow. Uh, we are having a meeting at 10 o'clock at the masjid for parents and students, for those that want to attend.